Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. This incredible pair of standing stones of Al Nasla is located in the Tamer Oasis in Saudi Arabia, and of course it looks like a huge boulder that's been cut in half with laser-like precision. Ever since it was first discovered in 1883 by Charles Hoover, the formation has fueled debates amongst academics, alternative researchers and tourists. And there are many who believe that what we are looking at is evidence of ancient high technology. Precision stone cutting at its very finest. Just look at how straight that cut is. The Tamer Oasis is rich in history, with even possible ties to a Babylonian king and there is no doubt that this rock would have caught attention in days gone by, just like it does today. It displays a fantastic example of historic rock art, with what looks like a human and a horse engraved onto it. Therefore, with the straight, laser-like cut aside, the rock is archaeologically significant. But it's the straight cut down the centre of the rock that really captures the imagination. Especially because each stone looks to be balancing on its own small stone pedestal. Both are precariously balancing side by side, yet the stones don't even touch. Experts say that this isn't actually an artificial wonder. It was caused by some natural geological phenomenon, but apparently there are a few different ideas to explain how it formed. And even though geologists can explain it, not everyone agrees. Firstly, some say that what we are looking at is a natural fault line. Once upon a time, before all the erosion we see today, the ground moved beneath the rock and caused it to crack. Because the soft sandstone erodes easily, and because the rock in fault zones are weaker, windblown sand could have blown into the crack over the ages, weathering out the crack to create the gap we see today. The cut may also have simply been formed from the natural jointing of the rock. Joints being zones of pre-existing weakness that can look very straight. So much so, that many think they are artificial. Again, natural wind erosion could widen the joint and exaggerate it, creating what we see today. Alternatively, the bedrock could be moving on a fault line and it is slowly pulling the two rocks apart. In support of this theory, there are other natural fissures on the rock that have not been opened up by weathering. In colder climates, water can get into cracks in rocks, and when it turns to ice, these cracks widen until the rocks are pulled apart. But this rock formation is especially interesting, because as well as the fracture, as stated, each rock sits on a small pedestal. This somewhat unusual and intriguing shape is actually quite common in some desert environments. We can find many examples of large rocks attached to the bedrock on wind-eroded small pedestals. The Al Nasla rock formation is in situ. It hasn't been quarried and brought to the area, and both rocks are still connected to the earth by their small pedestals. But some people think that this rock formation is too incredible and too perfect to be natural. And ideas including lasers, aliens and ancient high technology have been put forward to explain it. And, in truth, we actually can't prove that this formation isn't artificially cut. But why would ancient humans do it? Well, it could just be an amazing example of ancient art, a focal point or landmark for traders to look for and meet at. Simple metal tools could have created it because the rock isn't very hard. It's soft sedimentary sandstone. Without seeing it in person, the base looks more eroded than the crack. The crack still looks fresh and linear, not rounded by windblown sand like we would often see in a desert environment. Therefore, the crack must have come after the bulk of the erosion at the base. So, if it is a natural wonder, created by a fault like many geologists believe, why it didn't topple the stones on their small bases is a mystery. The pictures etched onto it are the only clear evidence of human activity, and it doesn't appear that any other part has been artificially crafted, shaped or scrawled on, unless of course the fracture was worked on and widened by human activity. 
Humans were in this area more than 1,000 years ago, and the area was important for trade routes, but very little archaeology has been done in the area to date. If I had to take an educated guess, I would choose a natural origin over artificial. It does just look like a natural sandstone outcrop, albeit with a huge perfectly straight crack through the middle. As stated in other recent videos on the Bosnian Pyramids and the Lady of Mali, nature does produce some incredible mind-boggling wonders, and although this does almost look too artificial to be natural, the natural explanation is the best one available at present. Thousands of tourists do flock to the site every year, and whether natural, artificial or a bit of both, you have to admit it certainly is an incredible wonder of the world. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.